Man, this is two videos in a row, everyone. It is 10 o'clock. See my watch, 10 o'clock. Where is Steve? I don't even know what we're talking about today. Where is he? Oh, holy moly, is that you? Leo? <laughs> you're, hey you're so silly. How y'all doing? Is the side, does the side look good on me today? It does, it's very slimming, Steve. <laughs> How much fun is that? So we're over at Lemur today. Happy Friday, huh? You guys have made it through another week, another COVID week, and here we are uh, at the North Carolina Zoo coming to you with Zoo Adventures today. We're at lemur, and we're gonna talk about the ring-tailed lemurs today. How exciting is that? You guys doing all right? Huh? Looking forward to an amazing weekend. It's gonna be beautiful out there. Get outside and play. Thanks guys for having us into your houses today, into your classrooms today. We're so happy to be with you. Ta-da! How cool is this? So ring-tailed lemur. Hey, Wendy, look. Well, that's pretty good timing. How are you? I'm doing well. This is Keeper Wiley, guys. Say hi to Keeper Wiley. So what are you getting ready to do? You gonna let the ringtail lemurs out now? Pretty good timing. Can we? Oh, sweet. I was afraid she's gonna say no. <laughs> How much of a bummer that would have been, huh? We're here ready to go. She, nope, can't watch. Oh. All right, Jody, let's see what we got. Got Wendy behind the camera again. I gotta get in the bushes a minute. Wendy. She's Lolo, Esther, and Maya. She's calling them out by name. Where are they gonna sit, guys? Where do you think they're gonna sit? I bet you can tell, but you can figure it out. Look at those gorgeous tails. <laughs> Following Jody, like, hey, where are you guys from today? Tell us where you're from. It's been so much fun to see. Oh, they're going to sit. It's a campfire. You notice that Jody's in a mask. She's in gloves. She's got a little skewer she's going to be treating these guys with. In a long sleeve jacket. All that is primate protocol. She has to wear that. That's not because of COVID. All right. All right. All right, so on the screen, guys, on the right-hand side as you're looking out is Lolo. Lolo is a male. Looking around, looking right at you. In the middle is Esther. Esther's a 12-year-old female, and guess what? She's the boss. In, in lemur world, it's dominated by the female. It's the female-dominated world. So Esther was in the middle now. Now she's kind of stepped off a little bit. Is the... Dominant female. Oh, gotcha. If you didn't hear Jody, there was a bird or something overhead. So she's like, wait, time to go on alert. Nice. And then on the left, who she just fed, that is Maya. And Maya is an 18-year-old female. Get this. She is Lola. She is uh, Esther's mom. So on the right, left-hand side, Maya is Esther's mom. Esther is the middle. Lolo is the male on the right-hand side, and he is Esther's offspring, Esther's son. So Maya is mom and grandmother out there. Ring-tailed lemurs. We were asking Jody, as we've told you guys before, these guys, the keepers are amazing and help us out with our information. I wish I could tell you that we know all there is to know about all the animals, but the keepers know so much more about the individual personalities of these guys. Look at Lolo standing up. They said, they said Lolo's all about food. Lolo's, he loves his food, so says Jody. That is so much fun. Their diet here at the zoo, and even in general at all, is fruit. They love their fruits. They also have to eat their veggies. Oh, and if you heard her or not, she said they also have to eat their veggies. <laughs> so 
so he, Lolo saves the green peppers for last, she said. He was, she tried to feed him a green pepper there, and he was like, no, nope, we're not there yet. Blueberries and bananas today. Any, any shout outs for blueberries and bananas out there, guys? I know, I like Nothing wrong with that. And I think you said they also kind of get a biscuit. <laughs> this is kind of neat for me. I'm actually standing behind Wendy. And during the videos, I don't get to see all the hearts and smiley faces and care faces and things like that. And right now, as I'm watching, I'm seeing all the hearts and the, and the likes and the thumbs ups. That's so much fun. Thank you for sharing those with us, guys. Uh, we do appreciate you guys shooting those out there. When I watch afterwards, they're all gone, so I don't get to see any of them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some more coming up. That's fantastic. That is great. So if you, I don't know, as I was watching those, I got a little sidetracked. Um, Jody showed us one of the biscuits. They kind of have a, a modified biscuit. It's in that spoon um, that get, provides a lot of other nutritional needs for the animals. And they mix up, them, they mix up the diet. It's a, there's a variety of foods that are fed out, not the same thing every day. As you can imagine, even I, who love a pepperoni pizza, I don't want it every single day. What you got, Wendy? So she said it rotates weekly for sure, daily sometimes, and with the season as well. Good stuff. Thanks, Jody. What you got, Wendy? We had a good question about are they always hand-fed or spoon-fed, basically, in this situation. Let me talk about the spoon feeding first. Sometimes we can hand feed these guys, but during COVID, during the coronavirus right now, there's a lot of hands off. Um, the keepers and, and the people that are working with us, they've made some exceptions for you all, our digital guests, to be able to do things like this. But typically, they're further away. They're not doing these kind of close interactions, especially with the mammals during COVID. And this is actually training. So they're station training right now. Yep. So they have to, if you notice, they're not getting food unless they're on their station. So yep. this is technically a training session. Oh, so they're getting- That's the dominant right there. That's the dominant. Yes, they're getting hand fed while they're station training. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're stationed like this. Um, do me a favor, can you get, can you get Maya doing yeah. her little sunbathing She's behavior? She's in there, she's okay. in there. We'll talk about that sunbathing behavior in a little bit. Um, so they do station them so they can kind of monitor who gets what and how much. Um, although they do scatter feed, they do put food out there as well for them to look to forage for and to find. So Joey trying to call Maya back. So we'll go, we'll go through the animals again for you real quick. There's Maya on the far left, not on a log right now. She's an 18 year old female mom to the middle one, which is, which is Esther. Esther is in at about 12 years old and Esther's offspring, Lolo, a male on the right-hand side, is about 11. That's kind of cool. These guys are about the same size as, as domestic house cats, but they do not make good pets. Nope, she's here, Jody. Jody's shaking her head yeah. saying, no, they do not. Um, all kinds of crazy care that goes into them. They're a social animal. They need the social interaction with, with like species. Um, so that is just not going to work. So, so they can live into they can live in groups of up to thirty, right? So Jody's telling us that they can transmit. We can transmit to them and them to us all kinds of diseases. That's one of the reasons that the primate keepers were. I'm going to say lucky, I'm going to keep that word in quotes. They were kind of used to the PPA, PPE, this um, personal protection equipment that everybody's wearing, the masks and the gloves. They wear that to protect them from their animals and the animals from them. So they're wearing masks and that's all the time. On a 105 degree day in Asheboro, North Carolina, mask, long sleeves, long pants gloves. How about a shout out for the keepers doing that in the middle of summer at North Carolina Zoo? Will he move for us? You guys want to see him move? Let's go see what we can find out. Sorry guys, let me curl out of the bushes. All Here right. we go. So Judge is going to kind of move him around for us. She's going to show them some neat stuff. What's going on? Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. yeah, Steve. 
Wendy! What? It's Come not on. like it's a l'emergency. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Wendy just said it's not a l'emergency to come over here, Jody. It is a l'emergency. So she's moving them around now. Some more targeting, give them some more treats so you can kind of see as they move around how they move. The ringtail lemur is a unique lemur. A lot of times lemurs are more arboreal than not. They're more in the trees. Arboreal meaning in the trees. The ringtail lemurs, they don't mind being on the ground. Now we've got them here so you guys can see them a little better. They can climb and jump as they wish on this structure, but they, are, they do not hesitate to go on the ground, which is unique in the lemur world. Something else is kind of unique with these guys is that they're diurnal. Da, 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 da. Science word. Already? Oh, they're smart. Jody said they're getting into her mystery bucket. It's... <laughs> they're already in the mystery bucket. So diurnal, daytime active. Most lemurs are nocturnal. They're nighttime active. But the ringtails, they're a little bit different again. They're going to be they're a little more unique. They're going to be active during the daytime. And again, very social as well. Hang out together. So Jody, what's this called, guys? Can anybody help me out? If I don't want to tell people what Jody's putting out now in the zoo world, starts with an E. Anybody have the term? When we, sh when we, when we try to stimulate the animals to do things, they might be doing kind of behaviors they would be doing in their natural spaces. Remember that enrichment term? So Jody is putting out enrichment. That's a suet feeder. You guys know suet feeders. A lot of you guys probably use them at home. And she just put different treats in there. You heard her earlier talking about some of the foods that she was doing, the bananas and the blueberries and the veggies. That means that encourages the animals to search, to forage, to look, to find their food in the wild spaces here at the North Carolina Zoo. I love it. Wendy, what you got? We did have a question for people who have come here before and know that normally we do have red rough lemurs in here as well. They're asking, yep. uh, do they still live together and where they are? Not right now. Um, we have these guys kind of in separate, court, in separate quarters. Just in breeding season, these guys. Yep. And so, typically, um, during breeding season, they're in Awesome. So it's breeding season, so looking to put everybody back together soon. There's a, there's a little bit more heightened aggression during breeding season, uh, and that's across animals, right? You know, if you get into this season where you're looking for mates, you're looking for something, you're going to be a little bit more aggressive. You're going to be a little bit more uh, territorial, maybe. Um, so they are not kept together right now, um, but they do hope to put them together soon. So you'll have the red ruffs out here after a while. There's some of the scatter feeding that Jody was talking about, kind of putting food out there. Where are lemurs from, guys? Where, where's the only place in the world? You, and this is a truth. This is crazy. The only place in the world you can find them in their natural setting. It's that island. And it's an island. That's crazy. The only place in the world you can find lemurs is an island off the eastern coast of Africa called Madagascar. Oh, we got it. Yeah, I tried just, to wait. I tried to, I tried to pause, give you guys time. There's a little bit of a delay, but we see it. We, you guys know your stuff. Good job, Madagascar. All right, guys, I'm taking off and I'll be so Wave to Jody, say goodbye to Jody, everybody. <laughs> and they will, I promise you. There's gonna be hands going up, waves and claps, Jody, I promise. Thank you so much. So yeah, the only place in the world you'll find these guys in their natural setting is Madagascar. And there's around maybe 100 to 105 species. And species are being identified regularly. We have done we did a graphic here when this opened up, when we put lemurs out here for the first time. Um, we, did a, we did a graphic and we thought, you know what, let's fudge the number up a little bit because just in case, because you don't know what's going on. That graphic was done probably maybe 11 years ago, and the graphic says 70. <laughs> so several more have been identified. A lot of smaller ones, a lot of nocturnal ones are being identified. But here's the catch. There's maybe 100, 105 species. Kind of depends on who's counting and how they're counting. 
90 to 95% are endangered. Almost every lemur species in the world is an endangered species. Live on an island, that's a lot of challenges. You have very kind of small populations already. A disease can come in and make a big impact really fast on small populations. And if they're a closed population, like on an island, man. Habitat loss, charcoal production in Madagascar is a big deal, but that requires so many trees and so much habitat that unfortunately the lemurs, the population of lemurs is going down. Look at, the, look at the way he holds his tail. Now, right now, I can't tell you who's who because they all weigh about the same and they look very similar. Um, but if you can see the way they hold that tail, the tail is really important to them. It is not prehensile. You guys might have heard that term prehensile before, prehensile, where it can hold on, almost acts as another hand, can wrap around and hold on to things. The lemur's tail is not a prehensile tail, but it's still very important. So when they're moving around, when they hold it up, almost look like a question mark. Did you guys see the question mark when he was moving? You can see it up on the other one that's moving in the middle. It looks like a flag. So everybody knows where everybody is. The tail acts like a flag. It acts like a signaling device. You can see it moving there. Can you guys hear that? The chimpanzees. That's the red ruffs. You think it's red ruffs? That's the red ruffs in the back down there. Oh, we're Jody, which one down? She might be yeah. doing something with them. Awesome. They're all hiding. There's <laughs> one. There's one. Hey, hey, look, look at this. Did we, find, did we find a Jody? A Jody just came. How are you doing? Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. This is Jody. Hey, everyone. We, I didn't know you were going to come by, but you said you might for a minute or two. That's you didn't have much right. time. Yeah. Um, wonder what Keeper Yurka wants. <laughs> a little shout out to Keeper Yurka, just because. Um, you have a shout out you wanted to do. You wanted to say hi to somebody. I can say hi to my two kids at home. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Cole. Jordan and Coleman. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing great out I there. I have to uh, second that because they are probably two of uh, the, the most adorable children. They're pretty good. They're pretty cute. We miss them pretty, here. They are pretty cool kids, that's for sure. Um, and I think you brought us a present. I did, Steve. I brought you a present. You ready for what I have in this box? I am. All right. We have here. Do you want to hold it? You mind? Absolutely. Very I'm going to cool. come over here. Very cool. I'm going to try to keep my distance from Jody. Let's try to do the social distancing. <laughs> Jody is awesome, but we're still trying to do social distancing. That's I don't right. have the mask on, so you guys can hear me and understand me. So this is the little skull of a lemur. How cool is that? The eyes are large and bulbous. They're just these big eyes. They almost look like they're having this wide-eyed stare all the time. They can't move their eyes very well in those sockets because they're all so they're always looking out. But they have really eyes great night vision. I was gonna say they have, since they're not most mm -hmm. species are nocturnal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. See, I know a little bit. They actually can see pretty well at night as well. So. That is so cool. So they can see a pretty good sense of smell, as you might imagine. And look at those teeth. We learned that they're herbivores, frugivores. They eat a lot of fruit. Herbivores, Herb, herbivores that eat fruit. And those teeth are really important for cutting through the rinds, cutting through the skins of those fruits. That is so neat. And that bottom jaw, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Watch the, what, look at those teeth on the bottom. Can you see how they kind of stick out? This skull is a replica, by the way. Our digital guests always want to know, is it a replica? Is it real? <laughs> yep. This is a replica. And let's look at these teeth. Can you show them those front teeth, Wendy? See how they jut out a little bit? In lemur world, those teeth are specialized. They call them a <clears throat> dental comb. How about that for a term? Those are those teeth are used as they're like a dental comb. They're a little bit longer, they're skinnier, they're really close together, and they use those teeth for grooming themselves or a partner. The dental comb. Look how sharp those teeth are for cutting through those rinds. What a neat treat. Thank you. See, they can also use those teeth. For a defense mechanism, again, really? some of 
of their rival males. Absolutely. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's kind so of interesting. So they do have sharp teeth that they can use. To that they can use males. to mm -hmm. And I do know that there's a couple few predators, not very many on the island of Madagascar, mm -hmm. but there are some predators in Madagascar that will look for these guys uh, on the menu. Absolutely. Uh, the Fusa's uh, type of weasel. If you guys don't know what a Fusa is, look it up. They look up a Fusa. Cool. They are really neat. F O O S A. They're really neat animals. Member of the mongoose family. And you can see these guys are foraging now. Some of the right. scattered food that I threw around for them. That's fantastic. These guys actually do eat insects too. I don't know if uh, you knew that, but um, they eat uh, fruits, vegetables, leaves, bark, and also some small insects. Really? They do. So a little bit of meat in their diet. So even though they're, so they're classified as herbivores, but they're mm -hmm. going to take some some um, insects or small critters when they get a chance. Yeah. Okay. That's neat. Look how agile. You didn't jump around like that for us, Jody. I was going to, Steve, yeah. but I didn't know if that would be too much. Well, you know, we don't we don't want to show off all the skills from everybody <laughs> just yet. Awesome. Very cool. Well, we don't want to keep you, Jody. I know you're busy, all busy, right. busy right now. At this time of coronavirus, the keepers are working split shifts. They're working in very distinct teams. Um, and they're smaller teams than yes, sometimes much they smaller. are. So we're kind of all so, over the place right yeah. now. So I'm going to go back and take care of my chimpanzee friends. How about that? She's going so. to be visiting our <laughs> chimps. Thanks again, Jody. Right. So very, thanks for sharing this call with right. us as Thank well. Thank you, guys. Thanks, bye -bye. Jody. See you later. That was fun. I like seeing our keeper friends. It is kind of it is fun. I, I mean, I like it hanging out with you every day of the really long weeks. So it's, it's nice seeing other faces. I sense something there, Wendy. I sense a little bit of, I don't know. There for a while, I thought we had a really good quarantine. Oh, you stole my joke. But I guess we don't have much of a quarantine as I thought. <laughs> oh, it's awesome, guys, working with your friend and your boss. It's amazing. <laughs> Back to lemurs, good folks. Deal. You saw that really cool behavior of when Maya, the older female, was sitting on the, on the rock work over there. She was kind of sitting with her arms out and her legs out. She was exposing her belly to the sun. That's on purpose. They're going to do that to warm themselves up. Now, they're not reptiles, right? They're not ectothermic. They create their own body temperature. But why not do that on a beautiful sunny day? Open your arms, open your legs up a little bit so you expose your belly to warm up during the day. I think that's kind of a neat way to, to kind of begin the morning, let's say. I mean, humans do it at the beach all the time. Well, sure they do. guys play a really important role in the environment of Madagascar. And this is all lemurs, not just the ring-tailed. These, again, ring-tailed lemurs. In the wilds of, of Madagascar, remember their diet is fruit. A huge chunk of their diet is fruit. And they're really important in the ecosystem because when they poop it out, when they poop, when they defecate, there's seeds in there from the fruit. So they're actually kind of planting other seeds or dispersing seeds throughout the forests of Africa. Just by going to the bathroom, just by defecating. I'm sure we have some folks out there sharing our answers again. I didn't look to see my bad guys. Um, so we appreciate you guys for helping us out with our questions today. Some of our colleagues back behind the scenes. Wendy, sounds like you have a question? Yeah, we had someone asking what kind of monkey these guys are. Oh, are they monkeys? I feel like you're gonna tell us. I'm waiting for somebody to answer the question. Are these monkeys? We know they're not apes, because they have a tail. Monkeys. They're actually something called prosimians. Prosimians, right? They're kind of pre-monkeys as far as their um, adaptive behaviors. So in prosimian world, they're the smallest of the primates. Now they are a primate. Oops, sorry guys. They are a primate, but not a monkey or ape. They're the smallest of the primates. Monkeys are usually kind of in the middle. Can you hear the frog? Sounds like a Chorus frog, maybe? Prosimians, their arms are shorter than their legs. In the monkeys and in the apes, the, the, the arms are a little bit 
longer, either as long as or longer than their legs. The legs on prosimians, again, prosimian is a type of primate. The legs are made for jumping and leaping high up into trees, where for monkeys and apes, usually not so much walking maybe, as opposed to jumping. You saw the tooth comb on these guys, they don't have that. <clears throat> on their nail, on their hands, their nails, on the digits, on their fingers, for the apes and the monkeys, there are nails. You don't see those nails as much as you do on prosimians. The prosimians have more of the dog-like face, kind of a pulled out snout. Can you guys see that snout on these guys? It's usually a little bit more damp as well. It's kind of a little bit of a wetter snout. Gives them a little bit, better, a little bit more of a better sense of smell. On monkeys and apes, the snout is a little bit more flattened, typically drier sense of smell, not quite as good. But they are all primates. So these are prosimians in the primate world. Monkeys, kind of in the middle between these guys and apes. That's a great question though, I'm trying to help spread the word on the differences between the different types of primates. Apes without the tails, monkeys with the tail, these guys do as well. It's also a good trivia. It is a great trivia. It will come up if you like to play trivia and it makes you sound really smart. And we need as much help as we can get with that yes. one. Yes. Which is good. We want to talk about, since, since Wendy was there, let's talk about this stink fight thing. Remember the graphic she showed? Were you guys here when she showed you the graphic? You want to see it again? Let's go show you the stink fight graphic. No, I'm not doing the stink fight. <laughs> You're no fun. But <laughs> males, even though Jody told us, Jody told us that they do have the teeth to fight. But this is their first line of defense, so to speak. When they come together, when they're going to try to find out who the dominant male is, they have a stink fight. True story. They've got scent glands on their wrists and on their chest near their collarbone. So there's scent glands there. And they take their tail and they rub their tail all in that scent, in that scent gland. Sense of smell, again, more important to the prosimians, like lemurs, than it is to other primates. They rub that tail on everything. And then they wag it back and forth. They wave it back and forth. And the stinkiest tail wins. Kind of tells you what's going on with that. How about, how weird is that though? Back in the days, I'm sure that's kind of what we were doing as well, wasn't it? Right? How much work can I do? How, how, how stinky can I get? How much extra cologne can I put on? <laughs> That's right. Not enough? It's uh, basically middle, middle school boys. Probably still not enough. Where's the act? <laughs> Mine did that. <laughs> I love it. How cool is that? Um, I do want to share, share two more things with you. Are you able to come with me? Yeah, ready? let me grab the MiFi. Okay. <laughs> We, we learned that lesson the hard way, right? Remember Rhino, guys? We kind of messed up with that, got a little too far away from the, from the MiFi. I do hope you guys are doing well, and thanks again so much for tuning in. It's neat to begin the relationship, be able to talk to you guys, kind of like we're on a visit. We talked about the tooth comb, the dental comb. We just have a picture here. I wanted to show it to you. In case you couldn't see it very well on the skull, I thought we'd sneak over here to a graphic. There's that dental comb. This is on the lower jaw of the lemurs. And they use that when they are grooming themselves or a partner. So that dental comb is really important. And it's unique to lemurs. That's really neat. Isn't that neat? I think it's kind of fun. The tooth comb, they call it. Dental comb. Woo. Awesome. Graphic. Awesome. Cool stuff. Neat to see. Uh, how about a craft? 
Oh, yeah. Want to see a crack? A Nikki outdid herself. Again. She's setting the bar. I on. know. We were just talking about a stink fight. <laughs> You're a goof. How ridiculously fun is that? These are just pipe cleaners. Paper, and then on the back, clothespins again. Nice job, Nikki, that's cool. And then if you really wanted to, you could have a stink fight. You could rub your tail in your, along your chest or your wrists and you could have a stink fight. Let's lemur crab. Great job, Nikki. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't tell you where, where they got their name. Let's move it, move it um, on over here. Move it, move it. Should I pan away so we don't embarrass Steve with his dancing? Move it, move it. It is kind of cool to show him the tree house. If you Let's come to the zoo, it. you can get on. Let's move it, move it. Are you done? You've got to move it, move it. You've got to move it, move it. You've got to move it. No. Anyway, there is a donation box. More money, more dancing. We've had a couple people Just donate. <laughs> Have we really? Thank you guys so much. Over $2,200 from you guys, our digital guests. That's awesome. These guys, the lemur gets their name from a Latin word, lemores, lemores, a Latin word that means ghost or spirit. Can you imagine being in the woods, being in the forest of Madagascar, in the forests of Africa, seeing these amazing treehouses and other things, and then hearing something like this. Are you kidding me? What is that sound? What is that sound coming from the forest, the jungle? And these bright yellow eyes looking back at us. What is that? The, the lemur just called back to the sign. That was a sign. And the lemur heard that and called back to it. <laughs> that was that awesome. Was awesome. <laughs> More treats for you. More well, treats. Let's show them the sign. But here's the sign. So the, la the name comes from a, a Latin word meaning spirit or ghost. And as the, as the people were first coming to, to Madagascar, they heard that sound. How we It is an eerie call. But it's what, one of the ways that the lemurs communicate with each other. They have those calls. We saw that we talked about the tail. That's what they use facial expressions to. And then that amazing call. Listen to this one more time. Close your eyes and put yourself in a forest. Right? <laughs> that is so cool. All right, guys. Thank you for asking those questions. I do have a shout out. Oh my gosh, I forgot my shout out. From all the way from <clears throat> Tajikistan. I don't know if that's correct or not. We're going to go with that. Um, Eliana. And her mom, Leslie, watch in Tajikistan. And it is going to be Eliana's, and I apologize if I'm saying the, na the name wrong, her ninth birthday on Saturday. Thank you so much to the North Carolina Zoo for watching. Um, Steve and Wendy, shout out to Eliana and from the North Carolina Zoo in general, and from North Carolina for that matter. Thank you so much for watching, for tuning in, and sharing that with us. So we're so happy to, to say to Eliana, Happy birthday on Saturday. Enjoy your ninth birthday. Whew. One of them has uh, gotten up in the tree here. Really? I don't know if you can see them. The chimpanzees are calling, but there is a, a subtle striped tail in this tree. They're probably oh, not. Oh, I see it. Wow. It's going to be hard to see, Kinda, but sorta. one has gotten up in the tree. All right. Great job once again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for asking questions and talking to us. It's awesome just to have a chat with you. Thanks to our uh, people that are behind the scenes answering the questions today. I'm in the sunshine, bathed in the sun. I should go through my lemur. Lemur pose. Lemur pose, exposing the belly. I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. Tune in on again on Monday. 
Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for Zoo Adventures. Monday, we have a pretty cool neat demonstration day with you um, for a pretty large animal that you might be surprised that we can go in with and actually get a weight on. The very first zoo adventure we did talked about a little one. Now we're going to talk about one much, much larger. Tune in on Monday to find out who we're talking about. Stay safe. Thank you again for bringing us into your world. Or how we could do this. The tunnel is there, guys. There's a light. Don't know how long the tunnel is, but there is a light. And we're glad that you bring us into your families, into your rooms, into your classroom. Stay safe. Keep your chin up. And we'll see you again on Monday. Bye, y'all.